Thanks, Coach Holden here at Invictus. Uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit about a piece of equipment. Uh, we see it a little bit less often than you would the assault bike or the, uh, the rower, but it's definitely a, a good, um, a good uh, tool to use as a modification for people if they're, they're unable to do uh, running, rowing, things like that. Um, so we're going to talk about the skier today. Uh, we see this a little bit more often in our competition class. We'll program that in every once in a while. Um, and I've noticed, uh, we, we threw it in the other day, and I noticed people kind of struggle with where they should be, how they should pull, what their body should do. So a couple defaults that I'm seeing, people will set up, and then it becomes an all-arm movement. You see this very often the first time people touch the skier. You're like, what am I doing? They just start kind of pulling with their arms, okay? The second fault that we're seeing is people that start to use their upper body a little bit more, but we're still neglecting that lower half, and you see more bend, but I'm still stiff-legged here, and still primarily pulling through my arms, okay? And then the third fault that I see is we put those two together, but then everything's kind of going all over the place, and it's a very sporadic pull. People are going as fast as they can, but still not, still not getting any legs involved into it, okay? Um, now, I'm not saying this is 100% the right way. Um, you might find something that works a little bit better for you, but I found that um, in, through trial and error, this is, this is kind of the technique that works best for me. I'm going to start each time with my hands as high towards the rack. We'll call it the rack as possible, okay? From there, I set my feet towards the back end of the skier, about hip width or maybe a little bit further apart. You can kind of adjust based on your height. I'm a little bit taller, so I like to sl slide back a little bit further. If you're a little bit shorter, you might be a little bit closer, okay? I'll reach from here, and as I pull, I'm going to pull my lower body down as well. So we end up almost in this hinge position, like we're at the bottom of a deadlift. It's very similar to that bottom position when we're rowing, we end up here before we press with our legs and pull. It's the same concept, we're just working in reverse. So we're going to pull our body down and then finish with a strong tricep drive. You'll see some people like to go outside with their arms. My personal preference is to just return straight back to where I came from, okay? Um, some people like to go out a little bit, they feel like they sh it shakes their arms out a little bit more. I've just found that for me, in order to maintain tension, which really is the name of the game when it comes to these C2 machines, being able to maintain tension throughout a full pull, so you're getting the most bang for your buck, okay? I found that returning it straight back, so I pull down, and then I return it straight back to the top before engaging in my second pull, and so on and so forth. I found that works a little bit better than the people who take the, uh, the butterfly technique, where they start to kind of widen out, and then pull back down. You'll see athletes kind of choose either one. One might work a little bit better for you. Um, that's just my personal preference, okay? Uh, let's talk a little bit about breathing, okay? When should we breathe, all right? There's a concentric phase when we're pulling, and then there's an eccentric phase when we're ret ret uh, returning back to the top, okay? My preference is to get a good exhale and then I use that eccentric, so returning back to the top is my chance to recover. Think of it like when you're rowing. You get a big drive away from the rower, and then you use the return as your chance to recover. It's the same concept here. You'll find that by utilizing your lower body and working on cycling through breathing, so instead of just going sporadic, trying to crank it as quick as possible, okay? By getting a powerful pull with tension on it throughout the top to the bottom and then recovering on the way back up, you can keep your stroke rate lower, which should in turn keep your heart rate down while still keeping that calories per hour higher or your, your, uh, uh, your pace per 500 a little bit lower. Okay? So just a couple tips uh, for anybody who, who likes to supplement this in. Um, if you don't have it, the same concept goes for the rower, okay? The big powerful pull and the return back. We're just working in reverse because we're going top to bottom with the skier. 